we're going to go into a little bit more nerdy topics, as I said. So we've been hearing a lot about like how people are building local first now and the benefits and all things, but I'm going to look a little bit more into what you kind of learned from having done for a while and what what kind of like the future could be, or maybe will be, hopefully, um, and kind of what the consequences of local first will be for us developers, in the, hopefully in, in the positive sense. So I'm Alexander Stix, and I'm one of the founders of Realm. Uh, Realm is kind of one of the uh, OG uh, local first platforms. Uh, so Realm was founded back in 2011. We built an embedded database, uh, a real object database, which is something that's pretty rare. Uh, so most of you guys will know embedded databases like SQLite, probably one of the few other embedded databases there are. And it's one of the kind of foundational pieces of doing local first, because you need to store your data somewhere locally. Um, and our dream was always to say, how close can you get to the language? I mean, can you make something that actually feels like part of the language? So again, like, we actually got a lot of experience. I mean, again, we launched in 2011. Today, we, we got acquired. We're part of MongoDB now, so you can synchronize directly to Atlas and all that stuff. Um, but I think one of the really defining things about Realm was that we started in mobile. And mobile is really the, like, again, the, the, it was the main driver of local first. As we heard earlier, it was kind of called offline first in the early days. Because mobile devices are offline all the time. Like, you walk around, there's always times where you're offline, and the apps still have to keep working, otherwise they are pretty crabby. Um, but that caused one challenge for us, because in some sense, web is easy. I mean, maybe you guys at the work don't think, oh, it's not easy, but web is still, for all the fragmentations that exist, it's still one platform. Well, mobile was not, even from the beginning. I mean, mobile was tons of platforms. Because you might think, okay, you have, like, on mobile, you have just, you have, like, iOS and you have Android, but people, but those are just computers. People can build, can and do build in anything on those things. So when we wanted to build a, a platform that actually well, allow, where you could like, synchronize your data out to the device and you could work it with it locally, we had to support all these different languages and platforms, which was a giant challenge when you really want to say, okay, we want to feel like you don't even have a database. I mean, we want to kind of push a limit and say, what is the, like, what is the absolute best experience you could have as a developer, where you don't really have to think, like, like we've talked about before, what is the premise of local first? It's all the things that get abstracted away. It's the fact that you don't have to think about network errors. You don't have to think about what happens when you go offline. You don't have to think about what happens when you have too much data in your local device. You don't have to think about, like, all these problems that you have to solve normally, they should go away. Um, and, but trying to do that for all these different languages was, was a, a huge challenge. Because they're all different. They work in very, very different ways uh, and different interaction patterns. Um, but I think there were some lessons we learned for it. And, and all these lessons, they kind of go down to like one central question. Which is really this, what happens when all of your data is available? Right? What happens when you are not bound to this kind of request respond, client server pattern that all apps have been built on for so, so long. And this really kind of drove us into like an almost philosophical thing, of thinking about the, the evolution of software. And it seems like when you look at the evolution of software, we had these, this bifurcation in path in the software. We had kind of two separate environments, you could say, that had their own demands. And, and one of them was the programming languages that you all know and love. They are like, they are about working with data. It's all about having data and transforming it, working with, interacting with it in all kinds of ways and presenting it to the user. But then we had a separate part, which was the database, which basically does the same thing. I mean, they, they might do a different subset thing, but it's really, you have a set of data, you can interact with it, you can present it to the user in, in various forms. And for all kind of, kind of historical reasons, these two paths have kind of run parallel to each other with remarkable little cross-pollination. It's actually really, really surprising how little cross-pollination has been between these two worlds. 
And that was really the realization by saying, well, when you don't, when you, oh, you have all your data, why do you need to have this bifurcation? Because the, the reason we can say, like, why do we have this bifurcation? Well, the reason, of course, was that it used to be that you had so much data that you had to put it in a specialized server that basically did nothing else but just getting that data and doing a bit of operations on and getting back out. And when that's the world you live in, when that's all you do, of course it makes sense to have like one kind of platform that's optimized for that, special for that, has its own language, has its own interaction patterns. Like you have to have skilled operators to work with it. It made total sense at the time, just like mainframes did. But when you come today and you say, well, I have all the data, and really to actually use it, I have to get it into my language anyway. Right? I mean, in your language, you work with like regular data structures. You have objects. You have arrays. You have dictionaries. You have sets. You have, like, it's, it's all standard things you work with. But those are not the things you're storing in your database, which is super weird. right? So you have this weird discrepancy between, like, in your language, you work with one thing. You have, like, pointers and references to things, you have like all these no normal data structures, and then it, suddenly you have to move it into a database where it's like rows and columns and joints and relations. Totally different from the, how you do it in, in your normal uh, work. So our thoughts like, what would that look like? I mean, shouldn't all these features that are in your database, shouldn't they really be in your language? I mean, all these things, I mean, the, the thing is that the kind of the original vision we had, the kind of like an insight that came from doing this all the time was like, what if all these data structures, what if every data structure in your programming language actually was persistible, and it was queryable, and it was like transactional, and it was indexable? All these things that are in the database world, why can't you do that in your language? And it's just like, it's this kind of weird missing feature. Um, so, going a little more in detail, like each of these could be a talk on their own, like how they are, but I'll just simply, not, don't run out of time. Um, I will just quickly skim over them. Persistence is the obvious one, right? I mean, you want to be able to take an, an object, mark it as persistent, and then it just is persistent. And you don't have to think about it anymore. And the funny thing is that programming language actually used to have that. And if you look at small talk like back in the 60s, 70s, it actually had this and it worked. Um, but it's something that isn't really there today. And again, we have to emulate it in ways that are kind of awkward because we are a library. But if this was a language feature, it would be so amazing. The other really big one is transactions. Why don't we have transactional objects? I mean, right now, if we do any kind of concurrency, it is crappy. I mean, we, we have like mutexes, we have locks, we have semaphores, all stuff that is horribly bad to work and, and like everybody knows that nobody can do it right. <laughs> I mean, we all know that. And the thing is, this is a solved problem. Databases solved this for like decades ago with transactions. Why don't we don't have transactional objects? It makes no sense whatsoever. And it is implemented, we did it. And I mean, you can try Realm, it works perfectly fine. I still think it's, it's crappy because it's an overlay of the languages, but it can be done in most languages. The same thing like linkable, right? Again, you should be able to link anything. Nobody wants to use joins, right? I mean, if joins were a good idea, you would have it in your programming language, and you don't because it's a crappy idea. <laughs> I mean, you should just have you should just have references and pointers, the thing, the thing, and be able to follow those. There's very, very few good use cases for joins actually outside of very specific analytic use cases. Right? I mean, that's the reason you don't have it in your programming language. It doesn't exist as a concept. Everything should be queryable. Again, we, at, this is at least where we see some progress. We have link in C sharp. We have like in its predicates in, in Swift and others. Every language should be uh, queryable so that you can query every single data structure in your language and make it part of your thing. Smaller things like why can't you index? I mean, the only indexable structure you have is a dictionary. Why can't you index on every property? So, the conclusion of this. I think the real promise of local first is that it changes how we like build apps. We have seen this transition with we had SQL first, then people went to NoSQL, which was really about how can we express things more naturally? How can we get closer to our language? And well, the closest thing you could get is there's no database. It really is just your language. And of course, it will synchronize to something in this uh, cloud somewhere. Of course. But that's all managed behind you. As a developer, it's all just there, it all just works but you get all the benefits of both a database and a programming language in one. 
So that's basically my vision for the future of local first. Thank you.